is uh, November 2010, and I'm at my girlfriend's co-op, and something amazing has happened, which is she's a ballroom dancing teacher and expert, and she used to be a swing dance teacher, and I am getting private swing dance lessons nice. from my girlfriend. Right? So we're doing, you know, twist, you know, we're doing like really cool moves. And she's telling me how to move my torso and she actually showed me how to turn. There's a way you can and there's a way you can do that really fast when you're just stepping, but it looks like you're just going in a circle. It looks like you're spinning. So anyway, uh, what's amazing is this is probably the first time in decades in which I am not ambivalent about a woman I'm dating. I mean, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be there. I liked her. I was into her. If I was running five minutes late, it was because I was really running five minutes late. Oh. Not the old BS where I'm trying to limit the time or I'm not really looking forward to seeing you. And so, um, this was amazing. If you had talked to any of my girlfriends up to then, if you talked to my ex-wife up to then, the, world, the word you would have gotten is ambivalence. And you know, I had perfected this technique and it's, the, it's when you go out in public with somebody, and let's say they're standing here, and when you're in ambivalence, you want to stand just far away that technically you could look like you're not with the person, and yet you're close enough that the person would feel foolish to call you on it. Right? I had perfected that. Damn! <laughs> so, what's, when I met my girlfriend, she already told me, look, I am leaving town. And it's a career change. And she and I decided, we're we going to take this leap and risk our hearts being broken. Because I had family in D.C. My dad was in a nursing home and I couldn't. I wasn't going to move. Well, we were getting along. And so we were talking about, well, maybe I should come out for the summer and see how it worked, right? See how it worked. And then I get, you know, we're doing that multiple communication, texting, emailing, phone calling. She's across the country. And that June day, she tells me, no. Aww. I do not want you to come across the country. And I'm like, why, why? And she says, well, give me a second and I'll send you this email. So about an hour later, I get this email. And the email had the following phrase. It said, I do not have enough physical chemistry with you to sustain a long-term relationship. And I'm like, what, what, what? Because this woman was interesting, told me I was the best guy she had ever dated. She told me I was more present than any guy she had ever been with. And so I'm just confused by this damn email. And so over time we talk and what's interesting is I had a point where I could have cut off the conversation and just say, hey, let me move on. But for some reason, I just wanted to pursue this. I wanted to get to the bottom. Yeah. What do you mean you're not attracted to me? What? I'm like, how the fuck did I miss that she wasn't attracted to me? <laughs> how in the fuck? That's like basic, what? How the fuck did I miss that? And um, it was embarrassing, it was excruciating, felt humiliating, felt painful. And yet, as I rethought our relationship, you know, she did stand just a bit at a distance from me. She did run late. She did, it did 
seem like it was work for her sometimes to meet with me. Where it wasn't work for me, it was like, this is fun. And so I put this together and I can go back and I can see, oh my God. You know, our first kiss, she was like, I thought you were uninterested, she said. Well, I thought you were uninterested. <laughs> like, we were like, wow, okay. Um, and so I felt betrayed. We've been dating a year at that point. So part of the feeling is betrayed. It's like, why didn't you tell me that shit early on? <laughs> and the other thing is, I had these phrases. So the phrase, you're the best man I ever dated, it's like I put it on the wall and I saw that that was not the opposite of I'm not attracted to you. Mm -hmm. She didn't say, you're the man I most want to be with. She didn't say, you're the guy I most want to date. She said, you're worth the most, you know, decent guy. And I had confused those. And so these days, uh, Dear Santa, I really thank my ex because this is a gift. And the last little part is I'm driving down the street about a year and a half later and I swear my brain explodes and opens and things shift around. And I realize that my ambivalence prior to dating this woman was because I did not feel a strong level of attraction to the women. I was like dating people who were smart and interesting, and creative and independent, but I was underestimating the importance of just visceral attraction. And I'll leave you with my definition of when somebody is attracted to you, and that is, do they want to be with you? <laughs> I'm gonna leave that. Do you want to be with them? Do they want to be with you? Does that come with ease? And you know, I wouldn't have gotten to there had she not given me that gift of rejection and honesty. Thank you.